Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be showing you how I put together this low pressure aeroponics system you see behind me here. I've had this system up and running for about 30 days now and it has been growing without fail. Uh, all these vegetables you see in here right now, those have been growing for 30 days in here. Now that doesn't include the germination times and whatnot for the, the seeds to sprout and everything, but they've been in the system uh, you know, as sprouts for 30 days as of yesterday. So. I'm getting ready to harvest some leaves off of this. It's already it's already got enough where I can get some salads and things off of these leafy greens. But I wanted to take you through this so you could see the growth that I did get in 30 days using this system before I before I pruned everything back. And these vegetables that I'm growing are mostly just like cut and come again vegetables where you take some leaves off and then they'll regrow leaves. So I'm not going to like completely chop these plants down. And so that's kind of the benefits of a system like this is that once you get your plants established, you can just keep harvesting leaves. You don't have to start seedlings over and over again if you choose the right vegetables. So I'll bring you in closer here and give you a look at what I got going in here so far. And then after that, I'll, I'll walk you through the steps of how I built this system. So follow along here. I think you'll get some use out of this because I couldn't really find much information on it when I was looking on how to build one of these systems. So stay tuned. All right, so just a quick look at what I have growing here in the front. I have some basil growing as a Genovese basil. They've all been topped and they're starting to form their second set of branches. Behind that I have a Bloomsdale long-standing spinach, which has been a little bit slow to get going, but seems like it's starting to go now, so I'm going to leave it in there. Behind that I have some slow bolt arugula, with the leaves are getting pretty good size on these. So those are looking nice. And then behind those I have some green onions growing, which seem to be doing well. It's just kind of an experiment. I put them in here uh, just to see how they do. I'm not sure why they're hanging over like that, but they're definitely staying nice and green and growing. Uh, on this side, I do have a few more uh, basil plants up here in the front. Those have all been topped as well and are starting to form their branches. But as you can see, they're starting to get overgrown with some of these uh, leaf lettuces here. This is a Grand Rapids uh, leaf lettuce and it's growing really good and I'm going to be chopping some of those leaves off and letting that uh, regrow some uh, branches, some leaves on that as well. Uh, behind the leaf lettuce I do have a romaine and uh, those are growing good as well. I'm going to harvest some of these outer leaves now that the centers are really starting to take off. And behind that you can see my one little tomato plant that I got going. This is just another experiment in here. And uh, there is a small marjoram plant back there as well. And I did start a Thai basil, which you really can't see back there too well. But it's going and it's starting to go well. So uh, once I get some of these leafy greens peeled back here, I think it'll give a little more light for everything to grow. But that's it. That's 30 days worth of growth here in this system. Everything's been growing good. And I hope it continues to, but follow along now. I'm going to show you how I put this system together. All right, so of course you're going to need a storage bin to start with. That's the foundation of this system. And then you're going to want to go ahead and lay out the net pots on your lid, whatever configuration you were using, whatever size net pots. You figure out where they're going to go. This is how I chose to do it. And then go ahead and take a small drill bit and drill a pilot hole through into the lid everywhere where you want a net pot and this is in preparation to uh, where you're going to drill your larger holes with the hole saw. Now on the note of a hole saw you're going to want to make sure your hole saw is smaller than the diameter of the lip of your holes of your uh, net pots. So just like I said be sure it's smaller because the, the lip on this is not very big on these net pots. Uh, once I figured out which size hole saw I wanted to use, I think I used a two and an eighth for my two inch net pots. And I drilled one hole to start with. And then I'm going to go ahead after I drill that hole and I'm going to test it and make sure that my net pot is going to fit properly in there. So it's sitting flush, it's not falling through the hole. And I'm going to go ahead and drill all the rest of my holes. Now, a little important tip here when you're drilling through plastic with a hole saw, Drill in the forward direction until the, the hole saw teeth hit the plastic and then put the hole saw drill in reverse and go through the plastic. It will cut through better, it will not jerk around, and you won't have to worry about fracturing the plastic either. So as you can see, I got all my holes drilled and everything is fitting nicely. So now that the net pots are all laid out, 
I needed to figure out where I was going to run the pipes across in between the net pots. So I just kind of stuck the lid on the bin, um, slid the lid off to the side, and I eyeballed where the, the rows would be. After that, I took my tape measure and measured between those marks to figure out how much space I needed between my T's and elbows of the manifold. And once you get those numbers, you can go ahead and lay out your pipe uh, pieces in between and uh, create this little bit of little manifold. Now I just say just start, make just the one side first and uh, you can test it out and make sure that it's right before you go ahead and make the second one. So I got a little pair of plumbing cutters there that I used to cut that PVC. You'd use a hacksaw as well. Either way, sand down the burrs if you're dry fitting this. It'll make it much easier if you had to take it apart. Especially those short little pieces will be much easier to get out if you need to. And then I went ahead and I set the, the manifold side, the one that I made on the lid. Made sure that all my plumbing was going to run in between all my net pots. And then I went ahead and made a second duplicate manifold. Now you're going to need to figure out what the width is in between these two manifolds. Keep in mind your net pots are going to hang down in there. Whatever I use two inch ones are going to hang down a couple inches. So your manifold is going to sit down in there a little bit. So uh, start out with one piece cross piece for your manifolds to connect to. And then go ahead and set it back in there and make sure it's the right width for uh for the for the depth that you want to set this into your into your storage bin before you go ahead and cut all the rest of the pieces and that first piece make sure you you know you better to cut it a little too long than a little too short um, after that go ahead and let's finish assembling the manifold again sand down your little ends it'll come apart much easier if you need to i put it together and then i once again did a trial make sure it's sitting in where you want it to go and in fact, at this point, it would be a good time to throw on the lid and make sure that the pipes are, in fact, running between all the net pots. You don't want any pipes sitting below the net pots. Now, you will need to cut in one additional T. This is where your, your pump is going to hook up to this system. It really doesn't matter which one of these uh, cross pieces you hook this T into, but uh, find a spot that's conveniently located on your system I chose to cut it in on one of the middle ones that just worked for me. And then after you get your T in, you're going to want to uh, make a little drop piece that's going to drop down to where you can connect onto your pump. And that's going to vary depending on the size of the storage container you're using. All right, and if everything's looking good, it's going to be time to install the little sprayers on the manifold now the little mister nozzles so i took off the drop piece and i took my lid and laid it on top of my lid and just kind of penciled in where i wanted my little sprayer nozzles to go on the the plumbing here okay so these little red nozzles you see here i ended up changing them out to something different i didn't really care for these they sprayed too vertically i wanted something more sprayed more horizontally and so uh, they are different in my end photos, you'll see, but uh, these ones, it's the same concept. You just drill like a 3 pilot hole, I think it was, everywhere where you want one of the nozzles. Also, those were all 360 degree, and so I didn't want the ones, in the end, I decided I didn't want the ones along the perimeter to spray 360 degrees because it was hitting the side of the tub and it was splashing a lot everywhere, so... In the next photos, you'll see uh, the black ones around the perimeter. Those are 90 degree sprayer heads and only the ones in the center are 360 degrees. So uh, it's pretty much where I wanted them laid out. Like I said, I did add a few along the, the sides of the manifold as well. Some 90 degree sprayers, which you can see here. Those are the black ones around the edges. And so everything was looking good at that point. I took the handles off of the tub. And I did uh, fill in the holes with a little bit of caulk just to avoid uh, any spray from the sprayers leaking out of the tub and make it a mess on my floor. So on my trial run, I quickly discovered that with these sprayer heads pointing up, this thing made a mess. It sprayed, it hit the walls, it hit the lid, it leaked out the lid, had to change it. So I turned the manifold upside down. The sprayer heads are now on the bottom of the manifold and it works perfectly. It sprays more sideways and down. I did have to adjust the manifold up, however, to hit the proper root zone of the net pots. 
but in the end, it's a perfect solution. So you'll see here, I have my, my two storage bins and this bucket here all plumbed together with a two inch line. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to use one pump for both systems. So this two inch line is just draining back to the bucket from both of the storage bins. So it lets water freely come back into the bucket. Then I put my pump down in this bucket connected to a half inch line, which I ran through the two inch line out to each bin and connected to the manifold. So being the two inch pipe is a bigger diameter. It lets the water flow freely back around the half inch pipe. And um, so it's kind of like a pump and return system. So it pumps out to the manifolds and it drains back through this T back into this common sump. And this works great because you can check your nutrient levels and your pH and everything without having to disturb the plants and lift the lids that the bins that the plants are in. And as you can see here, both sprayer systems are working off of the one pump and it's working beautiful. I just couldn't wait to get some plants in this thing. And so, so far everything's been working great. And I'll show you a couple shots of my progress along the way here. All right, so it didn't take long till I was starting to see noticeable growth on the sprouts. I put them in there. They just barely had some roots growing out the bottom. Um, every couple of days, I mean, it was very obvious growth I was seeing off them. Here's about a week difference right there. And you can see they, they took a big jump in just a week. I started out my nutrient solution at about 300 parts per million. And as they started to get a little bigger, I did double that. So I ended up with about 600 parts per million. And I also increased my lights from about 12 hours a day until uh, to about 16 hours a day. And I also did increase the pump frequency time that it runs. And I think I'm just going to keep it at that. I got it going for 15 on and 15 off. And everything seems to be growing well. And look at this growth difference from 28 days to 30 days. I mean, boom. So I ended up with a nice little uh, selection of greens to choose from today. I, this is a picture of them after harvest. And this is the pile of greens that I got after 30 days. And these plants are still growing and they're matured now. So they should come back with a lot of greens again. So if you would enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And I'll be sure to share some more of my progress with my hydroponic system with you. Have a good day.